All right, so we're here in Helena, Montana, uh, a few blocks away from the Capitol building where we're gonna be setting up for Let Us Worship on our Capitol tour tonight is uh, city, uh, Capitol number 41 out of 50 this year. And I just ran into David, this is a crazy story, just ordering a coffee and he comes in and he, we connect for a minute and he starts to share just a little bit of his story and his testimony. And I am just like, dude, People all around the world need to hear this. So David, yeah. so good to meet yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. How random, you're here with yeah. your three sons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Playing Uno yeah, yeah. in the coffee shop. But dude, your story's incredible. Yeah. So yeah. maybe let's just start with your yeah. name, where you live. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Well, uh, so yeah, David Burke here in Helena, Montana. I actually have four boys. Okay. So, and the other one's working across the street at Taco Bell right now or something. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Chilling, playing some Uno, but uh, yeah, I mean, so uh, I, I used to be living as a woman, so as a trans woman, so for, for a few years. And uh, for the longest time, even as a child, I struggled with gender dysphoria. Yeah. So you hear, you hear a lot about that and different kind of common um, feelings that people had. And it was something I, I, I couldn't shake for the longest time. Um, I took my kids overseas, like before this, uh, I was happily married and um, we went to Vietnam. We did a bunch of things, you know, for the kingdom, but I still was struggling with gender dysphoria. Yeah. And um, I mean, long story short, I, I started I started just giving into the sin and just kind of wanting to um, pursue that. I didn't feel like I I could find a victory. Wow. You know, I I prayed for years that God would take it away. Yeah. And um, I never experienced like like where I felt like I was totally free of it. Yeah. And so after that, I just decided I was gonna give in. I was just gonna live that lifestyle. Wow. So I, I uh, took hormones, I, I went through some surgery. Um, I was, it, it, all that stuff still affects me today. And my, my kids had to go through so much cause they were losing their dad in the process. Oh my God. And so, you know, and for especially four sons looking up to their dad, it's super tough for them. Yeah. It was super tough. And yeah. so they, they felt like, I, you know, I was, I was dying or something. And so they were, they were always praying ferociously for me wow. with their mom. And, um, gradually, uh, um, you know, I just, I felt like God had a purpose for my life. Yeah. And so I, I had known encounters with him. I, I know I known he was good and I just couldn't shake some of this and I was like God I really need your help yeah and um, I, I didn't fully believe after years or something that I was gonna get the victory but uh, I just remember like how I would struggle at the end of each day like I would feel happy throughout the day yeah. and like I, that was kind of like this thing I felt always happy throughout the day right. I was working as a nurse and stuff I was passing and stuff I it seemed like I had a lot of friends I didn't have a whole lot of barriers and I didn't have a whole lot of discrimination it wasn't anything like it was I felt happy but I still felt like there was a lack of peace like yeah. inside like I knew that God had a call in my life yeah and I knew that I would never be able to um, realize that call without without his his work in my life like wow. being who he created me to yeah. be as a man yeah and so I there was this one day I just remember so clearly how I was I was uh, I was just looking at myself in the mirror and I was just like, David, I hate you so much. You know, and I was just hating myself. And I just remember um, so strongly like, how I felt like God just all of a sudden just be right there. Jesus like showed up. Wow. And his arm was around me. And like, like if you've experienced the love of God and you've experienced him say this to you directly to your heart, he's like, I love you. Wow. He's like, I love you so much. And when he said that, it, it pierced so deeply. And and so I was like, okay, God, like, I'm ready to run again. I'm ready to run. I'm ready to get back into the race. I'm ready to start turning to you again. And, um, but I'm going to need your help. You know, yeah. I'm going to need your help. Yeah. And so um, I started just, you know, putting to death a lot of the things of the flesh. I knew that I wouldn't, maybe I'd felt happy, but I didn't know peace because I didn't, I wasn't letting the work of the cross, like, yeah. really take effect into my life and crucifying the flesh and really giving him everything 
everything. And so over the last few years, like I just been digging in, just been like spending more time than ever. I can't get enough of being in his presence and like in the word and stuff, being with him. Yeah. And um, over these last few years, like I can honestly say now, like where I was, I was so concerned that I would never find healing. Like I, I can honestly say now I'm glad to be a man. I'm so happy to be a man of God. I'm so happy to be how he created me to be because my sons now also get to, hi, <laughs> they're waving to me. <laughs> but, um, but I just, I, they get to see their father um, sharing with them the word of God, sharing wow. with them their, I, how to speak identity into yeah. their lives too now. Um, so it's amazing. So it's such a praise God thing for me. What a crazy story. So. Like there's so much here. What a powerful yeah. testimony. When, how old were your kids when you, and did you end up having, did you end up leaving them to pursue this? Yeah. Pursue yeah. being a woman? Yeah, so this was probably 2018. Actually, there's more to the story. I was um, also struggling with a different thing where a, a, a type of self-harm okay. or something. So I, I ended up really struggling mentally. Yeah. And um, I ended up doing this to myself too in the process. Cutting your finger off? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I frostbit it, and it like there's so much, there's so wow. much to it, and so I ended up going to the hospital, and this was like 2017. Yeah. And I started like opening up about all these different struggles, and I thought, okay, fine, yeah, I'm sharing them, I'm open and honest with them. Now I'm gonna get the victory. You know, but I wasn't, you know, entirely seeking God. So around 2018, after the divorce, I started um, pursuing life as a woman. And okay. I was like, all right. I and this was divorced. after you had four kids. Yep, yep. They, so you had four yep, boys. I had four boys. And you, you left them, you pursued yep. this. Yep. How long was that period? So that period was like uh, about three years. So from 2018 until I started living back again as uh, David in May of 2021. Um, and I had still spent time with them. So I was, we were doing things together. With, you were just at living as, at living as uh, Ayla or whatever at the time. I was living like that. And, you know, so they, they were kind of forced into a situation where they had to, you know, live with me like that or something. Cause now did that, did the community, when, when you, were acting as a woman, did that, what, what was that community like? Did they come around you and did they tell you to leave your kids? Like, what was their whole? Um, um, like, it, like as far as like LGBT community yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. or something. Um, it wasn't really leave your kids or something, but it was definitely more like do what makes you happy, even, right. even, right. At, even at their expense. Right. And so I felt like I was doing something good by, um, learning how to be happy right so that way because I, I was doing some things that were like more present right but i was at the sacrifice of so much more right uh relationally as a father identity being able to right. speak identity to them so that they know they're loved and that their right. father loves them um yeah there was a lot of sacrifice well the reason i ask is because i feel like we're in this season where god's exposing the dark underbelly yeah. of that community yeah. i mean you're yeah you're a, a living victoriously on the other side. Yeah. But as we're going capital to capital, yeah. we're doing these crazy altar calls where we're asking for people that are battling gender dysphoria yeah. and that are yeah. battling yep. mental illness and that are battling. Yep. And what we're finding is that there's such a freedom and a breakthrough when we just yeah. call it out. Yep. Yeah, which is yep. church. A Absolutely. lot of churches and ministries aren't willing to do. Yeah, yep. I mean, we're one of the only ones I know of that just. But when the love of God is there, yep. like we're going to yep. experience today in Helena, yep. when the presence of God is there, it's yep. easy. Yep. And I just thought. So what was the what was the thing you said you were standing in front of the mirror? Mm -hmm. Yep. As a woman. Yep. And or dressed as a woman yep. and and taking on your other name. Yeah. Yeah. And you looked at yourself. T tell me about that again and what, what the Lord spoke to you. Yeah, yeah. This is so, cool. so, I mean, because I had at the, uh, so while I'm seeking my happiness right. and living for myself and like being applauded by so many, it was actually, it was deteriorating my kids' hearts and I could just right. kind of see it, right? So I, I had just started to have this like deep loathing of myself. And in that moment, I was... I don't know why, I just felt like God was so kind to me 
when he could have been, you know, he could have been super mad or something. And but he, he so like looking in the mirror in this moment and just hating myself for all that I've been doing and like destroying my marriage, destroying my, you know, my kids' heart, yeah. leading them astray, leading them away from God, really. Right. Um, so I hated myself. And but there's it. So are you kind of like wanting to just know more about like in that moment? Just like, yeah, like and what did yeah. what did you feel like the Lord did in that yeah. moment? The love of God, because right. I want people to know how powerful the love of yeah. God is. Yes, absolutely. So so in that moment, because I felt like God had a lot of grace for me considering. Yeah. But I. Uh, like, I don't know if I would really allowed the love of God to pierce as deeply before. Right. But when he said that, and like, I felt his presence right there in that moment, um, when he spoke it, it just went like straight to the core of my being. And I, it just felt like, I don't know how to describe it other than just feeling like light, just like from the very core of my, my being, just like, almost like if you had your eyes closed for a long time, or like you've been in the dark and then all of a sudden you're like, you turn on a light and you're like, oh, it's kind of squint. There's like, it's kind of like, there was kind of like this, uh, experience of like his love and his joy and his peace yeah. and his his thoughts towards me and his yeah. kindness towards me and his love towards me was so radiant um, so I mean I was crying I was just I was just a mess and, and just there as I um, and it just made me want to so um, live for that love to draw right. closer to yeah. him because um, there's just no experiencing there's no experience I've ever come close to the love of God. Yeah. Um, that is so powerful. And so, ha and then so from that moment on, that encounter with the love of God, how did you get back? Mm -hmm. Right. So that was, that was a process of, um, <laughs> cause I had been like, uh, going through all makeup stuff regularly and stuff. I was wearing a wig and I was doing all these things and stuff day to day going to work as that. And I just started like turning a little bit in. So I, May 7th, I started going back to work as David. And I just, I journaled a lot. So I was like, all right, God, I'm going to need your strength. Wow. So wait bit, till that book bit. comes out. Oh, it's wait a, till that book comes yeah. out. Come on. Super cool. so, America needs that. Yeah. Yeah. There's just so much this to my story stuff of experiencing his mercy and his grace and his kindness and his love over and over and over when I really really did not deserve it, you know? And, yeah. But so it's been a process of uh, laying down my flesh. Yeah. For a while, I kept the makeup. Yeah. Just in case. And I'd walk with him, you know? But then uh, shortly after, maybe a few months over, I was just like, I was just feeling more like, I want to go all in. I want to go all in for God. Come on. And see all that he has for me. And so I started like, you know, destroying all the makeup stuff. Um, I went on a trip of stuff to where I had first got this wig. And it was over in Idaho, right? And um, I went and I cut it up there and stuff. And it was like this, I had this thing of like, I'm, you know, I'm laying it all down and stuff right. because like, I, there's nothing, there's nothing else for me other than Jesus. Yeah. Living for Jesus right now. And um, so there's a lot of like crucifying of the flesh and still like sometimes like the gender dysphoria would still try to creep up and I would miss or something like that. Right. And so there's, there is like sometimes a walk and I'm actually kind of glad that God didn't go poof in that moment. Like I really wish he would have like all throughout my life, but the, the, the process of going through and like laying down the flesh yeah. and walking with him. Yeah. And seeing him exchange right. certain things uh, in my life for blessings, like there's an intimacy that comes from that that I might not have had, you know. And I think there's cool things where I love, I and I totally believe in his healing or something. And so, like, I wish I maybe he would have done that earlier or something, but I don't understand yeah. always why there wasn't an immediate healing. Right. But to be able to walk with him and like experience like that intimacy of like being in his word and seeing, hearing his voice kind of interact with me throughout those yeah. years. Yeah. Like little bit by little bit, yeah. he starts to affirm who I am. He's like, you're a son. Yeah, come on. You're, you're not a slave anymore. Come on. You don't have to believe these lies anymore. Yeah. And so there's just all this freedom and from, yeah. but I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't have been digging into like the word. I haven't been right. sitting yeah. still long enough or giving up some of those things. Right. And I mean, now you're sitting here yeah. 
you got your identity back, yeah. you got your family back, yeah. and what have you been doing at the Capitol? Like, what's the connection yeah. there? Yeah, um, so they, uh, they were doing some uh, movement around the, the, the nation recently, and they, uh, there was a, an organization that was about protecting uh, um, our, the kids of the nation yeah. from b being forced into like hormones or going through right, early transition right, right. and stuff. So I wanted to share my testimony and stuff because- That is so cool. Um, you know, if, if I, I can just say like, if I was a teenager and I would have been at that spot too where they would have offered me, hey, you know, we, we can offer you to transition right now. Right. I would have taken it up back then. Yeah. And uh, in a heartbeat, you know? But now I'm like, I'm sitting here, I'm so glad that I didn't because I have four amazing boys and stuff on, that I would dude. have never have had. The joy of being a father. Yeah. There's nothing like it. Come on. There's nothing like it. And, uh, and what, what this is doing is robbing families of joy. Right. It's robbing people of such immense joy. I mean, because that's how God sees us. Like, he sees us as his children. Right. And we get to know the Father's heart. Yeah. But it's really hard if we destroy the Father's heart connection. Right. Yeah. And um, What's been the response since you kind of came public with it in your yeah. testimony here at the Capitol? What, yeah. what, what have you felt it? Um, um, so I've been sharing at my church and stuff, too. So I, I, I do lead some worship over there with our church there as well. So sometimes, like, in the middle, I'll just kind of share some of my testimony. So, but, so it's, it's encouraged a lot of people. <laughs> my son's funny. Um, it's encouraged a lot of people, I think, that... Um, it's just not something that they hear a lot of because right. usually like if you've gone into gender dysphoria it's like you're kind of told that that's, you'll never come back you'll never come yeah. back uh -huh. there's no hope there's so, like right. even if you've like you've gone through all surgeries you've had all your i used to have a dark beard but the laser treatment destroyed all that so now i have a gray beard you know wow. <laughs> you know there's, there's there's different things that you're always told like that's the only treatment right and without god if, i mean yeah yeah I mean, that's the best that they can come up with. Yeah. And, uh, I, I, you know, I pray that it changes or something. But, yeah, being able to share the testimony at the, the Capitol, I think it's given people hope to be able to just pray for their loved ones yeah. that, like, hey, like, God still loves them, yeah. too. Yeah. That if you have, like, gone into that lifestyle, yeah. Yeah. sometimes you feel like, oh, I've closed the door. I've given wow. my life over to Satan. That's yeah. it. No. Like, there's still hope. Yeah. There's there's always hope in Jesus. You think you'll be able to pray that with us today? I'd love to. That would be yeah. so amazing. I'd love to. Yeah. And you know, I, I I would love to end this time. This is such a powerful testimony. And thank you. And what a yeah. God thing for us to bump into each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. It's like God, every state God gives us these surprises, and you're you're a surprise today. Thank you. Um, would you just pray over people maybe that are battling that yeah. gender dysphoria stuff that you battled and yeah. you're now on the other side with freedom and breakthrough and would you just pray that over people yeah. that may be watching? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Father God, I just thank you so much. I thank you so much for your victory that you you saw, you saw something um, that you wanted to do through my life, God. Yeah. Um, God, I thank you that you didn't just leave me in the muck and the mire, Lord, that you saw. Come on. You wanted to give everything for me, Lord, just like the, the treasure that's in the field. You went and you, you sold everything. You, you, bought, you bought the field so you could get that treasure. And uh, I, Jesus, I just thank you so much for the victory in my life. I thank you for the hope, the plans, the purposes that you uh, have for me. And I just pray for anybody going through gender dysphoria Lord, would you just speak hope over their lives? Would you just speak restoration that you are never too lost? Come on. Because of the blood of Jesus, it can find us out anywhere. I don't care if you think you've given your soul to the enemy. Jesus bought it and his, his blood has the most value ever. So I just pray that, Lord, you would speak identity as Father God into anybody who's struggling with identity. And where, where fathers have not been very uh, present or maybe there's been wounds from fathers, God, I just pray, Lord, there'd be an incredible healing, Lord, and that there'd be an incredible uh, revelation and uh, understanding, Lord, that you are Father and you are a good and perfect Father and you don't let your children down like, like us earthly people do, Lord. 
I just thank you for your, your, your victory for people. Holy Spirit, I just pray for a massive um, turning to you, especially among the community is struggling with gender dysphoria. And that they would come to know that they're loved, they're valued, that there's victory, there's hope. Come on. There's peace, there's come joy, on. there's promises that actually come true. Yeah. There's not lies. I break the power of all those lies in the name of Jesus that says that you're going to be happy and find peace. It's only temporary. It's such a counterfeit. It's such a fake thing that happens. But the real power and the real, the real peace and the real joy comes from knowing Jesus and the love of God through, through him, Lord, and, I, through, and the love of God and the Father. Lord, I just, I just pray, Lord, that you would release that Thank into you. this nation. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, David. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you.